Hello badminton fans and welcome to Badminton Racket Review and to this test review of the Apex Wave 10 Badminton Racket. Right, let's start with the specifications as we normally do and we will compare the manufacturer specifications to our own E-Zone specification tests. So firstly we have the weight of the racket which shows at 5U shows it to be a 5U weight racket. The E-Zone weight test shows your racket to weight 84.6 grams. Yeah, I think that's about correct anyway. And the other thing I noticed here is, no, it does have a grip, it does, sorry, I was gonna say it doesn't have a grip, but it actually does a very thin grip there. Um, the balance point of this racket is 295 plus or minus three, so 295 is kind of like that, the balance. The E-Zone balance point shows this to have a balance point of a lot head heavier at nearly 311. So much further down the shaft is the balance point of the racket. Um, the shaft flexibility is 8.5 according to Apex. And to me that is yeah, I think 8.5 is, I don't know, if 8.5 is out of 10, then it's hard to say, but from our perspective, the E-Zone test shows us to have a medium flex shaft, and that is 100% accurate. Slightly more, uh, slightly stiffer, the, so there's medium flex towards flexible, medium flex towards stiff. This is going towards stiff, but still there's flex in the head there. Um, maximum string tension, Wow, doesn't say. That is so weird for an Apex racket. Let's see if we've got that information for you. Uh, the maximum string tension on this racket is 35 pounds. Maximum string tension, 35 pounds. Um, this is a G2 grip. G2 grip, this is all information we've taken now from the information from Apex directly, not off the racket. Um, we do not have information on how Oh, it does. It says maximum string tension, 35 pounds up here. Sorry, my, my fault up here. Um, it doesn't tell me um, the where it's manufactured and, and it doesn't tell me what it's made of. So sorry, can't help you with that, guys. No. OK, in terms of availability, well, there's actually quite a number of uh, different places that sell this, so you shouldn't have any problems getting hold of it. The UK price is around 40, 42 pounds for the racket. We'll be selling this particular one at www.badminton-racket-review.com, but we will not be stocking this racket, so it is a single purchase only. Um, um, like I said, there's a number of different websites where you should be able to pick it up from for around that sort of price range. In Asia, believe it or not, that it's actually sold for a more expensive price. I think there's a price war in the UK at the moment between two of the key online retailers and that's why the prices have been driven so low. So take advantage of that if that is currently the situation. Right, in terms of design, well it's quite unique. Um, it it's reminds me of the Abroz uh, way of doing business. Uh, it's a low price racket so they have kept the design to a minimum but it's effective to from my mind this is an effective way to do low cost design it's nicely done print quality is absolutely fine um, there's nothing wow about the design but on the internal grommets here they have like a recessed hole uh, where the string passes through to it. and the reset the internal part of the recessed hole is red so that's detailing work for sure um, and, and other than that it's quite plain um, but I think effective. I think with black strings, it looks quite nice. Take a look at the close-up uh, shots and see what you think for yourself. Okay, specifications are done. Let's go to the E zone.
Okay, so before we start our E-Zone testing, what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles, the Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonix BG65 at 25 pounds tension. And it's the same player taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, racket uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a uh, overall speed. If those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other, we then retake the entire test. This shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head, and also if you go across to the E zone, you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now, which accompanies every single racket within the E zone, so that's nearly 650 or more rackets, with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance, and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Okay, now we're gonna do an E-Zone maneuver test. The maneuver shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired, which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests so it's coming at the same speed all the time or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test Okay, so they're done. Now it's E-Zone control test time. The control test is a simplistic test. We've thought many, many times if there was any other better way of creating a test where we, we are uh, looking, focusing on the control of the racket and able to score it, and we so far haven't come up with anything better. So this, con this control test is essentially a test where we have 14 shots taken you're not seeing all the shots um, on the control video we, we generally film half or less of the shots taken the green bucket here scores maximum the gray scores slightly less and anything in the net or out scores nothing at all So what do we think of this racket? Well, this is an explosive racket. All round, this racket performs amazingly well. It um, gives good power, good defense, good drive capability. Um, it's not too light to use for singles. It gives good overhead clearance. It has a good level of control. Um, it's absolutely amazing all round. And uh, having used it on court, it does feel 
fairly light. I don't know. I think if you are an Abra Abraz Venom user, you're going to find it slightly slower than the Venom. But very like there's really nothing in it. Um, if you we had an email from one of the Ezo members recently, confused between the Astrox FB, the Abraz Venom, the Abraz Nine Nano 9900, and now this the Apex Wave 10. <sighs> That's tough. I think if you like quick, lively frames, then you'll be looking at the Abraz Venom. If you like just easy life with that with a racket that does everything reasonably well, then you're looking at the Nano 9900. Um, because that is, it's not as quick as the Wave 10 or the Avros Venom in the air, but it is all round capable. And this really is slightly more explosive, I would say, as a racket. It delivers really good on smashes. It, it, like I said, it's all round delivery is really, really good. Um, so if you're looking for a lightweight, quick racket that you can play effective all round game with if it's singles or doubles this racket will do the job and at the price it's absolutely a no brainer no brainer um, the question is this price point is now becoming competitive so in isolation this racket is 100% yes compared to the Abros Venom I think it has a slightly bigger biting point so that's also a good point the Abros Venom is the more livelier frame the quicker frame in the air if to feel it's a tough call honestly at this price point if it was me I'd buy both and just try them out because there's so little to divide them it's so hard to divide them from my perspective it's, it's getting so personal now that it's almost difficult to decipher between these two rackets like I say the Abros Nano 9900 is the easy to use uh, racket that's not going to offend anybody hard for you to find massive issues with a racket it's just not as quick in the air as these two these two are just lively and fast and ready to go um, I would say this probably is going to end up packing the bigger punch in terms of smashing um, if you just pushed it and pushed it compared to the Venom but the Venom is the one that's going to respond quicker uh, in other situations and having said that the Venom has a smaller biting point a smaller sweet spot so it really is a balancing act and what's important to you. Both of them awesome rackets, both of them worth trying. Now, if you're going to try this racket, and I think lots of people are going to try this racket, please leave reviews. If you're an EZO member, leave a review on the EZO, please. Uh, if you are not an EZO member, become one because there's just a crazy amount of information on each racket page within the EZO. If you're not familiar with the EZO, there will be a, a video tour following this video uh, to give you an idea of what these zones are all about. Outside of that, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much, so much for all the support. That <laughs> it's getting to a point where the amount of messages and emails we're getting, we, we're struggling to keep up with it now. But um, it's also phenomenal, phenomenal, and we really appreciate the, the support we're getting. So thank you so much. Um, please do keep up the likes. Do keep up sharing the videos. Let's build a community where we all have a much better understanding of rackets and let's make r the future of rackets better for the world of badminton and better for players all round. Thanks again for tuning in and we will see you on the next video.